Good evening. What you see here tonight in front of me is a story that I use in my playful ministry to help people reflect on a text of scripture that many of us are familiar with. It comes from the very beginning of the Bible. It's Genesis chapter 1 and the very beginning of chapter 2, where it talks about how God made the world in seven days. And my concern in this story is not about the mechanics of creation, <laughs> whether, God, whether it was a literal seven days or if that seven is kind of figurative. and uh, That's not my concern. My concern is mainly to help us to reflect on the the meaning, the significance of creation uh, as we encounter it and engage it and relate to it uh, today. And so tonight, um, I want to help us uh, do a little bit of reflection on this. In the future, I will come back to it. Uh, and uh, as I come back to it, we'll, we'll reflect on different aspects of it. But tonight, I would like to reflect a little bit on this seventh day, because it's the seventh day of the week. And uh, my, uh, I'm very aware of this. Partly because in my neighborhood, I have many of my neighbors are Orthodox Jewish people. And so if I'm out at a certain time on a Saturday, I will see them uh, either going to synagogue or coming from synagogue. And their day of worship gathering is today. And I think of them and I think, I wonder how they are experiencing this time where we can't gather. So my prayers go out to them. But I think also of all of us and how we experience the kind of the substance of the seventh day, what the seventh day is really all about when God created everything from the very beginning. So what I invite you to do tonight with me is to reflect prayerfully. We're going to use uh, a couple of verses from the text to guide our reflection and our prayer tonight as you think about your week and turn it into a prayer. But as we get ready for this reflection, uh, Let's um, just pause here. The seventh day is this plaque that's right here in the center. And you'll see it's a circle, and it has three circles in it. And you'll see why there are three circles. From Genesis 2, verses 2 and 3. I'm going to read it a few times, and each time I'll guide us in some prayer reflection, prayerful reflection. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. The 
by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. Seven is a number of completion, perfection. It's a full circle. Everything comes full circle on the seventh day. It's perfection, it's completion. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. It was finished. Complete. Nothing was lacking. Everything that we need, light, water, sky, ground, plants, sun, moon, and stars, fish and birds and animals and humans, nothing lacking, everything complete, finished. I wonder as you think about your work, I wonder if you feel your work this week was finished. I wonder what you feel might be unfinished. I wonder what your prayer might be for that unfinished work. I wonder how you feel your life is still a work in progress. that you as a person are still unfinished in the making. I wonder how you feel about that. And I wonder what your prayer might be about that. And I wonder about other people that you know whose lives are still unfinished. Uh, sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I relate to some people and they rub me the wrong way. <laughs> and I think now, well, I guess there's still a work in progress too. And I guess I don't have to be so impatient with them. I wonder what your prayer might be as you give grace to people whose lives are like yours, <laughs> unfinished. It says, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, 
he rested from all his work. He rested. Now the word is that the Bible uses later is the that it's Sabbath. This is a Sabbath day, a day of rest. And the word Sabbath just means stop. And we often think of it as kind of a religious word, but it really isn't, you know, religious per se. It just means stop. If I wanted to stop someone from, you know, running into danger, I could say, Sabbath, stop, <laughs> to them. That's kind of the meaning of it where God stopped and rested. God had been doing, and then God stopped and rested. And there's a perfection to that. There's a perfection to stopping and resting. Read these words from Abraham Joshua Heschel, who writes about the Sabbath. He says, there is a realm of time, a realm of time, not of space, but of time. There is a realm of time where the goal is not to have, but to be, not to own, but to give, not to control, but to share. Not to subdue, but to be in accord. Life goes wrong when the control of space, the acquisition of things of space, becomes our sole concern. And so this time of Sabbath, this time of stopping and resting, is not about having, but being. Not about owning, but giving. Not about controlling, but sharing. Not about subduing, but to be in accord, to be whole and complete and reconciled. And so as we reflect on this, I invite you To wonder now, I wonder, I wonder how hard it is for you to just stop. <laughs> to just slow down. My, my guess is there are not very many people who are slowing down enough to actually watch this. <laughs> very few people are doing that. So probably for you, it might be, uh, you might be quite practiced at this slowing down and stopping. But I wonder normally how how hard or easy is it for you to just stop? To just rest? And I don't mean to, to rest and when you're resting from your regular work to do more work. A lot of us do that. We, we rest from our regular work and we say, okay, now I can do some more work on something different. Uh, I, I mean really to rest, to really to stop all kinds of work. I wonder how you are at that. And I wonder what your prayer might be to that end. I 
think in another time I'll talk about play in rest. The role of play, the relationship of play to rest. But for now, let's, let's move on to our third part. So it says here, by the seventh day, there's that number seven, the number of completion, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day, there's another seven, and made it holy. And made it holy. God blessed it and made it holy. That word blessed is conjures an image of um, happiness, gladness, a deep joy an enjoyment, a delight over what God had made, but also over just the, the practice of resting itself, the phenomenon of rest itself. God blessed rest and made it holy, set it apart from all the work of creating. <laughs> it's a special, special thing. It's extra special because on the other days, the other days were blessed, but this was blessed and made holy. <laughs> made extra special. So I wonder as you think about your work this week, I wonder what part of your work you especially enjoyed? And I wonder what your prayer might be for that. And I wonder what God may be especially enjoyed in your work this week as God worked with you and through you. I wonder if your enjoyment is, uh, is God's enjoyment. <laughs> that God enjoys what you enjoy could be. I wonder what God's prayer might be as you work. What God's prayer of enjoyment might be. And I wonder what you enjoy especially about this set apart time, this rest time. I wonder what gladdens and renews you in this rest. I wonder what God enjoys about your rest. I think about God making everything, and on the sixth day, God said God made the humans. And then the very next thing God did was rest. And this is just my imagination, but it was almost as if God was saying, I want to stop working now so that I can just be with you, <laughs> so that I can just enjoy you. So I can just be present to you. 
and to everything I've made to just enjoy it. Not to control it and subdue it or to make more, but just to be. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Notice there's three sevens in there. Another sign of completion, of perfection. He rested from all the work of creating he had done. We're going to close with this prayer from Psalm 131. It says, my heart is not proud, O Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, Put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore. Now make that your prayer. I'll read it once again. My heart is not proud, O Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have stilled and quieted my soul. Like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me once again. I'll be back tomorrow night.